you know, tell us about this deal. This is a, you're trying to manufacture a, an antibody, which is a complex drug to make on the scale to supply, to try to stop a global pandemic. I mean, this is really an unprecedented challenge. Just tell us about the challenges you're trying to solve here. Sure. Well, thanks uh, for having us on, Meg. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, Regeneron has been in the lead in trying to develop these so-called antibody cocktails to combat uh, this terrible virus and this and make a, a dent, in, uh, a big dent, we hope, into this pandemic. Uh, we've been exploiting technologies we've been developing for years. Um, and despite all of our efforts and all of our technologies, which we're very optimistic about, um, we use them, for example, to treat Ebola. We've shown that they can uh, uh, attack this virus in monkeys. And now we're working to show that we can uh, do this in people. But it isn't enough to be able to prove that this cocktail can do it. You have to be able to supply it. Um, supplying these things are extremely complicated. Um, you know, for probably 30 years, we've been admiring Genentech, part of the Roche Group. We've been admiring them when we started. We've been emulating them. Uh, we've even been recently competing with them. And now we're really excited to collaborate with them because they bring to bear this probably one of the largest capacities in the world to make human monoclonal antibodies. Uh, and it will more than triple uh, and substantially increase the amount of doses, uh, if the drug uh, cocktail is effective, that are available in the United States and around the globe. So give us a sense of, of how much of this drug actually will be available and when. You know, We know you struck a, a contract deal with Operation Warp Speed in the United States for almost half a billion dollars. And you said at the time you could supply for treatment because the dose is higher up to 300,000 doses or for prevention up to 1.3 million doses. Thinking about the number of people who are at risk for COVID-19 or who have COVID-19, that clearly won't be enough. So just tell us about how much you're expecting to be able to supply now and the timeline for that. Sure. Well, so um, we're working very hard to transfer our technology, which is kind of a big deal. Um, but this is what you do in pandemic times. Uh, we're transferring our technology to one of our competitors. Uh, that technology transfer is already underway. Um, I think that there's such a sophisticated manufacturer of biologics that it will take months rather than years. It might take others to uh, be able to operationalize uh, our technology. Uh, and once they get going, um, that between them and us, we would think that we might be able to supply, for example, in the uh, uh, preventative or prophylactic mode, maybe four to eight million doses a year, or even more, frankly, um, depending upon how things are looking, they have more capacity, we have more capacity that we're trying to squeeze uh, our products, uh, our other products and make it available and staff up. Uh, so millions of doses per year, maybe up to as many as eight million in the preventative mode or more. And of course, you're both working on this at risk before the drugs have even proven to work in clinical trials. Tell us about your level of confidence that these drugs will work and really make a dent uh, in stopping this pandemic. Well, yeah, you're exactly right, Meg. This is sort of a, a reordering of the way things are normally done. Normally, you get the evidence before you make this very big investment in scale up uh, and, and capacity. Uh, it's sort of we're making the uh, investment, as is Roche, uh, in the capacity, um, hoping uh, that our cocktail will, in fact, work. And now, why do we think it'll work? Well, um, as we said, um, it's worked in the setting of Ebola, where it was a life-saving uh, drug, um, a cocktail. Uh, this cocktail now is directed uh, towards uh, this particular virus. Um, and so we hope that it will do the same thing, that it will be either life-saving or prevent people, for example, we're doing a study in people, um, household contacts of people who already are sick. So if your wife or your brother or your sister or whoever you might be living with um, is sick and has COVID, we think that maybe we could prevent you from getting it. And if you're hospitalized, we might be able to also prevent you from getting worse. These are the things that we have to get data for. At the end of the day, we it all depends uh, on the data.